Hi there, and welcome to kind of an impromptu Facebook Live here in the Praying Christian Women community. I actually didn't realize that today was going to was declared a national day of prayer until my father-in-law sent me a notification. That's how out of the loop I am. But um, today has been declared a national day of prayer in response to the coronavirus. Um, I don't have the exact wording. I posted it on when I um, when I made this announcement. I posted the exact words, but basically to pray for the containment of the coronavirus, to pray for our first responders, our healthcare professionals, and the people that are on the front lines of fighting this terrible disease that is that is taking lives, and um, for the families of those who are sick. And um, we just really want to come together here at Praying Christian Women and bring our voices together um there is so much power in corporate prayer and this situation seems bigger than pretty much uh any one person could make a difference with but we know that even one prayer even one prayer unleashes amazing power and god has placed prayer burdens on each of us so that we don't have to pray for every single thing we don't have to take it upon ourselves to pray for every single facet of this crisis. Um, God is using each one of us in our communities, in our homes, in our states, in our nations. I know there are people in our praying Christian women community that are from all different countries from across the world. This isn't just a United States thing. This is, this is for all of us to come together and all of those prayers make a difference. So I'm so glad to see all of you all joining us. Um, I don't want this to be super long. I want this to be really doable and and maybe 10 minutes or so, kind of like our Take 10 Tuesdays usually are, which means it'll be more like 15 or 20 minutes if you know me. But um, I just want to take this time. And this really reminds me of the National Day of Prayer that was called in Great Britain during World War II. And I posted the link to this story in, in one of the posts in Praying Christian Women Community. So take a look at that. I am notorious for getting details of stories wrong. So I'm not even going to try to recount the story, but read the story from guideposts. Um, there was a national day of prayer called to um, basically ask God to turn the tide of the war. Um, the movie Dunkirk kind of portrays some of the events surrounding that national day of prayer. I don't know that the national day of prayer was mentioned there. Um, but there were some miracles that happened. God moved mountains that turned the tide in, in miraculous ways. Um, so I really see this as a huge issue, a huge event, a huge concern for our world that is ripe for God's hand to move. And I, I see this, um, the president calling a national day of prayer as an opportunity for God to really get the glory for the turning of the tide. And I want to be really clear. Jesus tells us that in this world, you will have trouble. I don't know if God is going to respond to our prayers by wiping out the coronavirus. I know that God is going to use every single situation that comes from this disease, which is part of living in a fallen world, to bring glory to himself. I believe that will come in the form of miraculous healings. I believe that will come in the form of people becoming saved as a result of feeling like they're at the end of their rope and they're afraid and they don't know where else to turn. Um, I believe that it will come as Christians come together and realize that prayer is powerful and, and God is going to do incredible things. It doesn't always mean it's going to come in the way that we want it to or the way that we expect it to, but God is moving. And this is exciting for me that there's this day where we're all coming together to pray because I know that God is doing amazing things. So for us individually, um, I'm going to pray as I feel led today. Put your own prayers in the comments. And I think it's really important for us as individuals to be open to God's leading and not just pray through a list, not just pray through someone else's list, but go to God and really just seek wisdom and guidance. God, how do you want me to pray for this? Who are the people that you want me to be lifting up? How should I pray for them? I think there are some people that we need to pray for miraculous healing. God's going to raise those people up. There are other people that maybe they will not be healed, but maybe God is working in other ways. 
so just to be open handed with our prayers and to just lift up our willingness to be these vessels through which god's kingdom will come god's will be done on earth as it is in heaven and he's going to do things so much better than we could ever even plan or or ask him or imagine through the prayers that we could fabricate and i think at the same time yes pray your heart's desires if there are loved ones that are sick pray your heart out for them to be healed god wants us to come to him as little children praying to their heavenly father um we have not because we ask not um so let's just go to him in every way that you can possibly imagine that you could ever dream to pray um let's just come to him now and and pray those prayers um, so I'm going to just get started. Thank you all for joining me. If you join me late, um, you can go back to the beginning and, and watch this through and, and pray through the replay. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Let's pray. Father God, we just come together. We acknowledge you as sovereign, almighty God. You are on your throne. Coronavirus is not bigger than you. You are bigger than any virus. You are bigger than any panic or fear. You're bigger than any economic downturn. God, you take these things that we call bad and you use them for your good purposes. We don't know how you do that, God. We don't know how you allow this darkness to be redeemed and reclaimed and and transformed into good but you do it and we praise you for that god that is our hope god we thank you for this paradox that as the world grows darker that our lights even our little lights shine all the more brightly that the light of christ can be seen in these dark times even more brightly and even more powerfully than the light could be seen if everything was just plugging along like normal Thank you, God, that you have woven this truth into the fabric of our fallen world, that we can be light, we can be salt, we can be different, we can point people to you in ways that couldn't happen without crisis, that couldn't happen without fear and without people turning to um, to those who seem to have a confidence. Lord, I just I pray that we would be the people that our friends, our family members, our community members look to for help, that we could point them like beacons to Jesus Christ in their time of deepest need, that when they're hurting, when they're anxious, when they're sick, when they don't know where else to turn, God, that we would be there. We would be the hands and feet of Jesus to people that may not have any other glimpse into heaven but us. Father, we lay ourselves at your feet as living sacrifices Lord, we pray that you would guide us and direct us, not only in our prayers, but in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, that we would be open, that we would surrender to your will for our lives, that we would be able to go out and bring glory to you through this crisis. Thank you, God, that you're faithful to do that. We are so inadequate. We are so imperfect, but we don't have to be perfect because Christ was perfect on our behalf. We can tap into his perfection. We can tap into his love. We can. We don't have to conjure it up on our own, God. Because of the Holy Spirit living in us, we have that abundant fruit that can well, it, well up in us if we would just surrender. Give us the power to surrender, Lord. Guide us right now as we pray. Guide us in our actions and our thoughts and our words and our communities. Help us to see truth. Protect us from fear. God, I just pray that we would take those fears, that we would take those anxieties, that we would take that worry and transform it into powerful prayers, that we would transform them into powerful affirmations of who you are and what you can do and what you've already done and what you're doing in our lives. Lord, I pray we would cling to scripture, that we would pray, that we would read our Bibles more than we're reading the news and that you would speak to us, God, that the words would jump out off of the page, that we would be encouraged and that we could take that encouragement and share it with those around us. I pray, pray for divine appointments, for meetings that we didn't expect, for plans that might have, have wrenches thrown in them. There are travel plans that aren't happening. There are schools that are not meeting. There are churches that aren't meeting. 
Um, but Lord, even in those things, you create divine appointments that wouldn't happen if those things had been going on as normal. Open our eyes, God. Remove the veil. Help us to see the reality that's going on around us in the spiritual world, the places that we need to be, the people we need to be talking to, the words that need to be spoken. Help us not to feel inconvenienced by things that, that might be changing, but help us to see them as your sovereign hand at work. Thank you for your sovereignty. Thank you that we can count on you being at work in all things, even the things that we call bad, to bring about the best for us and for the world. Lord, we lift up those that are on the front lines, the people in the medical field right now, nurses, doctors, other medical professionals that are treating people right now. Lord, I pray that you would guard their hearts, their minds, and their spirits. Lord, that you would keep them from spiraling into thoughts that, that might cause them um, excessive anxiety or worry. We pray that you would give them strength, physical strength. I'm sure they're tired. I'm sure there are places in our country, places in, in the world where there are people that are just at the end of their physical rope. We pray that you would give them what they need, God. Sustain them and help them know that it is from you. Put people in their lives, if they're not believers, that will point them to Jesus. Help them when they're at the end of their rope to come to you, God, face to face with your son Jesus and with the reality and the beauty and the rest that's in the gospel. Lord, I pray that you would protect them physically, allow them to, um, to remain protected from getting sick. God, we just pray that for those that are believers in the medical community, that you would just strengthen them, God, and just, just ignite a fire in them to share the gospel to others around them to share the gospel with those that are hurting and that are sick, that might be dying. Father, we pray for salvations in the powerful name of Jesus, that his name would go out at this time in ways that it never has before, that there would be doors that would be opened through this crisis for people to hear the name of Jesus for the first time, for people that have heard his name over and over and haven't responded to see him in a new light now. God, that you would be glorified, that even now there would be thousands of souls committing their lives to you, God, being resurrected from death to life, even now, because of this crisis, Lord, not in spite of it, but because of it, that you would take this evil, this sickness, and that you would use it to bring people into your kingdom who never would have heard of the name of Jesus otherwise. Lord, we just pray for medical supplies and practical needs. We pray that you would remove barriers and boundaries from hospitals that need supplies and equipment to be able to get those things, Lord, that you would open doors that only you can open, that you would cut red tape that only you can cut. Lord, that you would hear the prayers of those who know the specific needs going on right now, that you would hear them and that you would respond in ways that they would know that it was you. Lord, that you would be glorified, that there would be miracles happening, just small miracles in these communities that need you desperately, and that those miracles would be known by people that don't know you, and that they would see your powerful hand at work, and they would come to know you as a result of these things that are happening. God, we pray for the vulnerable people in our communities, our families, our friends, our neighbors, the people in our sphere of influence who are elderly, who are sick, who have chronic illnesses or who are otherwise immunocompromised. We pray that you would protect them. Bring them to our minds, Lord, right now, just for each one of us. Help us to, to have these people come to mind as they need help. Some of these people might not want to ask for help. Some might be afraid to go out of their homes, but also even more afraid to ask for other people to help them. Let us come to them, Lord. Show us. Bring them to our minds so that we can go to them. We can ask if they need help and that they will know that they're protected by you, God, that they'll know that you are prompting us to come and check on them. You are prompting us to go get groceries for them or take them to where they need to be if they're too afraid to go out themselves, Lord, and that you would get glory from that, Lord. 
we pray for miraculous healings. God, we know that you don't guarantee healing every single time, but you are a healer. Lord, you are a um, powerful healer. And we do pray, God, that you would bring miraculous healings in the lives of people that are affected by this virus. Lord, that you would raise up powerful intercessors to pray in the places that you want to display your glory. I think of the blind man and and the question, who sinned that this man would be born blind? And the answer is no one sinned. He was born this way so that the power of God would be displayed in his life. I believe that there are people right now who are sick so that your power could be displayed as they are raised from this sickness in a miraculous way. We pray for that power to be unleashed, God, that no one would be afraid to pray for miraculous healing for fear of disappointment or that we would feel protective, wondering whether or not you're going to heal, that we would be hesitant to pray for miraculous healing because we don't know the outcome. God, prompt us to pray in bold and and powerful ways in these places where you want to raise people up in miraculous ways. God, we pray for unity and solidarity. I pray against division. There's so much ugliness in our world right now, in our communities, in social media, in our interactions, politically, socially. God, we pray that this crisis would bring us together as Christians, as people, that we would just um, cross party lines, that politics would be out of it, Lord, that, that we would come together and become unified that we would pray with one accord for your will to be done and that you would be the the glue that binds us together as believers, that we would not look at people who have a different way of going about things or people that believe that we should be handling things in a different way from us, Lord, that, that we would be loving in our interactions, that we would put pride aside and that we would in humility regard others as better than ourselves, that the way that we conduct ourselves in these days would be a way that would bring glory to you, that would make us a city on a hill, God, a light, that people would look to us as believers and see how we're coming together, how we are submitting to you, how we're getting our strength and our confidence and our peace from you, and that they would want to be like us, that they would want what we have, not for our own pride, God, but so that they would look to you, they would look right past us to Jesus Christ. God, we just pray that we would be a beacon of hope and of light and of peace. I lift up those who are struggling with severe anxiety over this crisis. I know this has to be causing some real panic and extreme anxiety in people as they read the headlines, as they um, fear for their lives or for their, um, their loved ones' lives. God, we just pray that you would help those people that you would help them to see that you are the source of peace that transcends all understanding, that will guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Father, help us know who those people are because it's so easy to go through life wearing a mask and and be um, dying on the inside and looking fine on the outside. Help us to see past the outside. Help us to see those people that need our help, that need a prayer, that need to be... um, just taken aside for a conversation, um, make us sensitive to those people so that we again can just initiate those conversations if they're afraid to initiate them. Point us to the people that need help and let us be the hands and the feet of Jesus that can point them to your powerful healing power, Lord, your peace. God, we lift up our leaders that are making decisions right now. We are powerless in a lot of ways as just common lay people living our lives. But the people that are in power, the people that are making decisions, um, we just pray that you would infuse them with wisdom, godly wisdom, not the wisdom that the world gives, but they would have eyes to see whether it's our local leaders, our school boards, our governors, um, our presidents. Of, our, of of the countries where we live, Lord, our um, our world leaders, people making decisions about travel restrictions, um, 
there's so many variables and it's almost impossible to know. and no one knows the future but you, god. so i just pray for wisdom and we just lift these leaders up to you and we pray that whether you know whether they know you or not, that you would impart wisdom that you would lead them and direct them and guide them to make the decisions that are best for the world lord, we pray um second corinthians four sixteen says, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly renewed day by day. God, I pray for all of us. Um, particularly people that are sick right now, whether it's with the coronavirus or with something else, Lord. But um, but I, I just pray for all of us that that regardless of, of our physical condition, regardless of whether we're sick or well, God, whether we're wasting away outwardly or not, that inwardly we would be renewed day by day. Lord, that your spirit would rise up in us and that in those believers, especially that are sick right now, Lord, we just pray that they would not lose heart, that they would know that you are God, that you would comfort them and give them peace, that from this moment on, whether they recover or whether they don't, Lord, that you would give them a spiritual renewal, God, that you would build up their spirit inwardly day by day, no matter what's going on in their bodies, Lord, that their spirit would remain firm and would even grow in in its intensity and Lord that their spirits would grow in the knowledge of who you are and confidence in your goodness and your provision you are Jehovah Jireh you are the almighty God who provides for all of our needs you have all of the resources of the universe and then some at your disposal you are the supplier of every single one of our needs. We pray that, God, that you would be the supplier of all of our physical, spiritual, emotional needs according to your glorious riches in Jesus Christ. Father, be glorified in this time. We just pray that this day would be a turning point, would be a turning of the tides in so many different ways. God, that people would see that this national day of prayer was called and they would see a distinct line, a before and after, before people came together and prayed like this and after, and that there would be a distinct line, that you would be glorified and that your son Jesus would be lifted up high. Thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for the hope that we have, that nothing that this world throws at us will derail us from your purposes, that you will stay on your throne. You've always been there. You always will be. And we can count on that. Thank you that no matter what chaos surrounds us, that we can stand firm on you as our rock, our refuge, our strength. And I just pray for each one of us, Lord, that you would direct our prayers today, tomorrow, in the days and weeks and months to come and show us how you want us to be praying. Show us the areas that you have called us, those divine appointments, those prayer burdens that you have for each one of us as prayer warriors to unleash amazing power to bring heaven here on earth. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I just, I'm, I'm so glad that you all showed up and um, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, share in the comments where you're here from. I see Tina Seward watching from the Atlanta, Georgia area. I am coming at you from the um, Anchorage, Alaska area and share in the comments where you're joining us from and what your prayer requests are. If you have specific prayers for people that you know, for leaders, for whatever it is, we just want to hear. And this, I believe that this is a turning of the tide, that this day of prayer is going to be a turning point. Thank you for being part of it right here in our little corner of cyberspace. Thank you for being part of the Praying Christian Women community. And may God bless you and just strengthen your spirit and use your prayers to change the world one prayer at a time. <laughs>